this clip is wild. Really, really wild. Okay, there you go. We got something oh, else coming in here from super uh, chat. lyrics of best songs. How often did Brenda piss in the sink? Did multiple Brent, times a day. He did piss in the sink. Oh, multiple times a day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and again, like this, it, it was weird. Like it didn't, I think a lot of other people had a more visceral reaction to it. So um, only, you know, like the creative director, Mike Nell, who's, who's a great guy, um, you know, and <laughs> great guy, never met him. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he, he was the one who like, you know, and he's, he's really direct too. Mike's a really great communicator. And I liked working with him as I like working with everybody. Um, because at Thick Boy, because they're all good dudes. Mike was a really good communicator and he was able to, to communicate directly with Brendan. And that's what would create tension because he would say things like, you know, here's how you're failing me as a boss or whatever. Or just like, hey, man, if you're going to criticize me, like, uh, you know, he's going to speak his mind. And, and you know what's really interesting about that, right? Going back to the specific comment about Brendan pissing in a sink. That legitimately might be one of the most disgusting things I've legitimately heard. Because I remember on a show, having listened to it, Cause I, don't, I haven't watched a full The Fire and the Kid for a very long time, but the ty- the ones I did watch back, I don't know, maybe it was like 2018, 2017, I did remember that being like a running joke, right? Like, oh, um, when they'd go and piss, they'd set up be like, oh, I'm going to go piss out of my big dick or something. You know, they love dick humor. So it'd be like, oh, I'm going to go piss out of my really fat dick or something, or I'm going to get a snake out. But there'd be little jokes and innuendos thrown around about pissing in a sink. And I always thought it was like a, like a like a little you know inside joke you do between friends but he legitimately does it like as the alternative to pissing in the toilet not like in an emergency because i think you know none no one's gonna sit here and say they haven't pissed in the shower before right everyone's kind of probably done it at least once but it's not something that you do on a regular you don't just jump in the shower and then piss in it it's maybe one of the things where you happen to be in the shower already and then you want to piss and then you say what's, what's the point of me getting out and pissing when i could just piss in here and the water's still running in the same place that's completely different but deciding to piss in the sink, and again, think, think, picture this, right? Because we need to get this up in a minute. I'm actually going to find it. But I want to see what the studio looks like. But from what I can understand of the studio of Thick Boy, it's basically one of those um, places, what, do, how do, what would you call them? It's basically like a, like a studio space type of thing. So if anything, you'd imagine they've probably got one big room that they maybe partition, or they've got several rooms. But for sure, one of the big rooms, maybe the room where the fight and the kid is filmed, is also the place where they film the fight companions, or the Calabasas fight companions. You'd imagine it's kind of like a, it's kind of like how my flat's laid out, where it's like, I've got like a living room, and I've got like a kitchen at the back. So it's all like one space. I don't know, I don't know what you call those things. I forgot in, in interior design or rooms what they called. But I'd imagine that's how it is. I'd imagine it's like a big space that's got like a kitchenette area and a corner. So that sink isn't like a, a sink in a bathroom because you know it's like a it's like a sink it's like a sink that you use to like wash your toilet sorry your cutlery and your whatever else do you know what i mean it's maybe where you go get some tap water or something you may put some water in the kettle and the coffee machine that's an actual like sink that's used to make food and shit because it'd be different because i've known i've i've been in places where some offices some really sh- 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 shanky ones where they might have a bathroom that only has like two loos, but it has a sink where people wash their hands in. And if you're really bursting and you have to go, then, you know, you got to do you got to do. But it's not like a regular thing that you do. Like, you know, like I mentioned previously, I think before when I heard this, I was saying somewhere else that, oh, um, I remember living at home the same thing, right? When I was living back at home, they'll be like, you know, there's five of us at home and there's only one bathroom. Clearly, if you're busting, you're either going to go outside quickly and piss or you're going to just piss in the sink. But it's not like a regular thing again. So the fact that he does this on a daily basis is absolutely ins- insane. So I'm going to quickly type this in because I want to see, I want to see if this is actually real. Let me see. Let me go to Thick Boy Studio Tour on YouTube and see if they've got, yeah, see, yeah, they've got one straight there. Okay, cool. There's, they've got one. Thick Boy's got a studio tour. you got another one. Shops. Okay, cool. Let's, let's, let's do this one because I want to see where that sink is. And I bet you any money the sink is actually in the same room. So you can only imagine, number one, how gross it is to hear someone pissing in the sink. And number two, the smell of that bad boy. Like, oh my God, oh my legit God. And this is like a thing that he does on like a daily basis. And again, outside of the personality traits and the, the things he does and the excessive lying and whatnot, what not, like that pissing in the sink thing might be the grossest thing I've seen. What's going on? YouTube. This is, this is like a blog thing? Yeah. Yo, make sure you subscribe right now. Turn the post notifications on. I got you. What's up? I'm, a YouTube I'm new YouTube. to it. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not. Do it right now. Is this the beginning of the video? Turn, turn the post notifications on. Like it. Drop a comment. Share it. Yeah, let's go for the algorithm. Comment for the algorithm. You guys know what to do. 
I know this is a bit of a nitpick. I know it's a bit of a nitpick. And I know some of you guys don't like the guy. But don't you find it interesting? In the first 17 seconds, Bradley Martin has displayed way more charisma and um, charm and just ability to like know the medium he's working with. You know what I mean? Like he kind of just gets it, you know, content wise. And I know he's not a stand up comedian. I know his YouTube is different, but you would imagine a stand up comedian who's been used to being on stage all the time, who speaks in front of different audiences, who's always kind of having to find the funny in everything. You'd imagine it'd be the similar sort of level. But if anything, Bradley Martin comes out of it looking at the star in the first, in the first 17 seconds. Like he's already got it. You know what I mean? He's just like it factor. It's really interesting, isn't it, to see? Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> sneak peek at the new thick boy studios it's been a long time it should be done in a week and you'll see it's you know it's getting there we have the artists in there we're kind of game playing stuff out you'll see it still has a ways to go but you'll get the idea but business is definitely not going well though because brendan looks way more happier here isn't it he was full of optimism i just checked it as well this is like one year ago what did i say the exact date yeah july 4th 24 2021 he was full of so much optimism. Do you know what I mean? So much, you know, like there's so much on the horizon, so much going forward and just the year on. And if anything, if you look at him now, like he looks really beaten up. Do you know what I mean? Like the reality of the situation is getting to him. Everybody's ran away. Chappelle's gone. BGL's gone. Shrimp is gone. Cat has gone. Who else has gone? Um, Malik got gadooshed. Um, Josh Wolf doesn't be, you know what I mean? Like everyone's finished from that and that and this whole like creating a network thing has basically died because i'm not even sure do, do you guys know for sure is is the golden hour and is the golden under and the thick boy or is that a separate thing like a, like does brendan classify the golden hour as a thick boy show like the king's thing or is that a different but yeah tank has gone too i wonder if that's the same thing or if they're like a, a separate thing because damn the only thing that's kind of keeping thick boy studios r r up and running is the fire and the kid and what? Um, the Shorb Show? I don't really think so. Right? Maybe, I don't know. I don't have keys yet to the studio. It's not officially mine till Sunday. Sorry. We'll be quick. So you walk in, big thick boy thing there. This will be the new Fire the Kid set. So we're going to get all the people in here to do all the work, the set design, that's a base. But that, the hard part was getting this stupid. Finishing the floors, done this weekend. The walls are all black, so the artist, can, A, it looks dope, but B, it's easier for the artist when they paint, do all their thing on the walls. Are you Brandon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's the next person you're going to be interviewing? Uh, Brandon Moreno. The oh, that, yeah, yeah. No way, but yeah, yeah he barely won the UFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, when I opened the door, I was like, damn, who, is that really him? I was yeah. like, there's no way yeah, that's you. Good to see you, man. Yeah, no, thanks for your work, dude. Yeah. He hates interacting with his fans, isn't it? He fucking hates it. <laughs> Brendan hates his own fans. That was so that guy was so nice, isn't it? Like so cute. Oh, hey, are you Brendan? Like you're super stoked to see him. Brendan could not get away from him quick enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, cool. Cool story. You're a fan. Alright, now fuck off. Go back and do your work, Pablo. You know what I mean, Jose? <laughs> he did not want to talk to him in the slightest. Fucking hell, man. That guy was really nice. Don't forget to see. So you look right now. Oh, is that the sink there? Did I see a sink? Oh, my bugging out. Did I see a sink? Look at me getting inside. Is that a sink? Is that a sink? What's that? Is that plumbing at the back there? No, it's not. That's, I think, it's some sort, oh, it's some sort of mop thing. I thought that was the sink. <laughs> Read act. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Don't forget to see. So you look right now. It looks like shit, right? So I can't see me, though. I thought it was. You see it all. Oh, oh, no, I think that's it there, actually. We just, I just missed it. That's so it there. So you look right now. It looks like shit, right? That's it there, right? Yeah, that's it there. No? That's the kitchen there, right there. Yeah, that's it, right? So essentially, like, the toilet must be somewhere around here in the hallway. 
got no excuse really in it to be pissing there really no excuse whatsoever to be pissing there it's legitimately in the same room like you could it could be said it could be argued right that depending on who you're interviewing maybe the partner of who you're interviewing or like a colleague or like a friend of theirs they could be sitting in the kitchen on their phone on the wi-fi or something just hanging out right just watching some youtube clips or something waiting for their friend to finish the interview and then you roll by and pull out your <laughs> your little willy and slip it over the side of the flipping you know sinker and piss and unless he's a giant right you're gonna have to rest your flipping flaccid peen on the edge of the flipping cold still like sink and piss in it and then what do you do you think brennan's the type of person to run the tap i bet he doesn't run the tap i bet he just pisses and just keeps going because run the tap at least is kind of like semi-flushing it, but it's not really because it's stinky. He probably doesn't run the tap. He probably doesn't, you know, sprinkle some, you know, some bleach on it or something and let that go through or some soap. Zero. He probably just, you know, has his little flaccid peen over the edge of it, pisses, and then just leaves. So imagine you're the friend of the guest that's been interviewed, just sitting there on your phone, just, oh, oh, Brendan, man. What are you doing, Papa? It all sticking spans like that. That's the goal. One week later. What's going on, boys? Man. <laughs> Look at this picture. Everybody's been gadooshed. Everyone's been gadooshed. Everyone. Everyone's been gadooshed, right? Look at it. You got you got you got the you got the human Labrador in flipping Chappelle Lacey, right? He'll make the most unfunniest person in the world feel like they're fucking Dave Chappelle, right? The way he fucking breaks up laughing. He makes you feel like you're killing in the room. So I'm, sh I'm no Brendan's missing him because, you know, Brendan would say the most unfunny thing and he'd be there cackling all over the place. So he's gone. And in general, you know, positive vibes, happy vibes, just completely gone. BGL, the flipping, the dick juice, uh, flipping plug, the Addy plug completely gone and also the 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 resident holder of um of uh you know pepsi boxes and stuff multi-packs let's look at he's got size eight feet there i don't know people say he's got really small feet is that true I'm not sure if that's it it's weird does a security guy have with small feet in it because why, why does that matter if you i remember maybe because i'm a maybe because i was a i'm a rehabilitated sneakerhead but back in the day when i was like you know really collecting a lot of shoes the annoying thing that I hated is that I've always been like a, well, I'm like a US 11, now going up to a US 11.5. And I always hated the fact that from when I was like 16, I, I had like size 10 feet. So imagine all my friends have like size 7, size 6 and stuff, and they're getting cheaper shoes. But I've had to, I have to buy like adult size shoes. So I always used to get annoyed that my feet were so big. Um, and I didn't have the ability to buy like kid shoes or something, or like, you know, be able to get shoes on sale that was smaller size. And the fact that all these guys have, you know, smaller feet, but they want to look like they have big feet. It's really weird. But anyway, then you got Brendan here, you know, surveying his employees as they're coming in, pulling into work. So it must be so lonely and boring now, isn't it? It's just him. So say what you want about these guys, but at least they created a bit of a vibe, right? They're there. At least they're, you know, but have some banter to talk about, catch up on things on the news and shit. Who's he talking to on the regular? Chin? Probably not. You know, producer Nick? Probably not. It's completely changed the whole makeup over there. Oh, you just you just worry about yourself. You just worry about your sandwich. Show me that sandwich you ate. Who's <laughs> <laughs> that pumpkin loaf? <laughs> Brother, it's some grains. Bro. Dog just got done lifting. Need my grains. It's a keto sandwich. We got keto bread now. Right? All keto, all the time. Yeah, how long did it take? Oh, gang shit. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm for I'm advocating for Chin to be paid like a million dollars a year or something. Because that man is single-handedly holding Thick Boy Productions, the Fire and the Kid together. And he's out here driving a Prius. Now, I don't know if he's driving it on purpose because, you know, some guys have that thing of like, you know, they want to be the, the struggling creative and like, you know, drive a little banged up car to make himself look humble. But I'm hoping he gets paid a lot, but he's just very frugal. That would be my hope. Like, he's just a chill guy. He doesn't really care about material things. But if it's not the case and he can only afford a Prius, that will piss me off legit that'll piss me off because i think he's the most important person at the fire and the kid with, with the exception to brendan right because we already see what the fire and the kid looks like when brian cannon holds it down and it's not good right he's not going to be able to hold that ship up but 
regardless of yeah, again, people saying in the chat, Chin's a dweeb. Regardless if he's a dweeb, take away your feelings about Chin being a dweeb. Take away that I ain't crying when I'm singing. That whole bullshit that he does, right? Take all that stuff away. Take away his horrible homemade food. Take that away. As a job, he smashes that job. That podcast goes out on a consistent basis every week. The audios, for the most part, is really good. Um, the video gets uploaded good. You know, there could be some redactedness in the titles and whatnot, but he shouldn't be paid to sit there and be putting up flipping titles and writing descriptions. That should be someone else's job. But in terms of producing the show and putting it out there, he does a great job of recording. And he's and he's like a one man machine too. He doesn't really have you know some teams. You look at the your mum's house. They have a guy on switches. Same with um, Ethan Klein and the H3 podcast. They have different guys like, you know, operating the switches and shit and getting clips up on the screen. He's doing everything himself. He's watching the monitor. Um, he's watching the audio levels. He's switching the cameras if need be. He's putting stuff up on the screen on his own, solo dolo. And, and the guy on the side is just there giggling or writing down notes about what was funny to pop on. You know, it's not a, not, a, not a thing. It's not like a small thing, but still, I'm advocating for the fact that Chin should be paid double what he's on now. Wherever Chin's on now, he should get double. That's my thinking, in my opinion. Today, whole gang's here today. Whole gang, what up, Kyle? What's going on, man? How was the lift today, Mark? Amazing. Even though I, I woke up, plotty. I woke up feeling sick, had an energy drink, fucking powered through it, popped some Tylenol, oh, show up, you know what That's I'm saying? That's what sets Mark aside from you guys. You guys would have stayed in bed. Yeah, exactly. But you Mark know what? Harley. If I'm gonna die, at least I'll die at the gym. This is how you get three fifteen. <laughs> One thing I noticed, Brendan loves this shot, innit? Brendan loves this, like, walking into the shot, right? Walking into my dreams, walking into the room, you know, one step closer to getting where I need to get to. This is me, my journey. He loves this back shot. Either that or his producers or the videographer loves these back shots. Again, back shots is a weird way to say, but you know what I mean. He loves this, like, angle. Yes, it's, 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 it's superhero angle. I've seen this angle, like, a million times already in this little um, clip that he's watching. Walking in, like, here we go. And obviously have the hat backwards so we can see the Supreme label. You know what time it is. There's a lot of BGO in this, isn't it, man? There was a lot of love for it. He had a lot of love for that guy. There's a lot of BGO in this. He had a lot of love for that man. Now they're broken up. The, the biggest heartbreak of all. He probably is taking this worse than he's going to take if the Mexican ends up leaving him, isn't it? God damn. Marcus really is. Father to a murdered son. Husband to a murdered wife. I'll have my vengeance. In this life or the next. <laughs> The spot I'm standing. You could probably guess BGL's top ten favorite films, in it. If you if you wanted to, you could probably guess them. But you know, bless him. This is still a good movie. And right now, it's this open area. This is the priority right now, because the first Calabasas FC fight companion show will be live July 10th for Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, UFC 264. Me, special guest. I cannot wait. But you're seeing the spot right now. We got about. We have 14 days-ish. Get some work to do, man. In here is where you will find Fighter and the Kids. Fighter and the Kid will go here. Look at this, look at this face. Remember, fighting the kids. <laughs> you remember that shit? Because fucking Brian Callen got, you know, accused of rape. Um, Brendan had to like freestyle and figure out the show and added a Z and started having it be a, ro a rolling. No, actually, he started it, tried to replace Brian with somebody else. That didn't work out because I think he got Josh Wolf on and he got bored of him. Then he had the other guy on, something Caffold or something. And he kept interrupting him and the chemistry wasn't well there. Uh, maybe Mike Caffold even left. I'm not so, I wouldn't surprised if he did because every time I saw the clips of them on the show, Mike Caffold couldn't finish a fort without Brendan interjecting. So maybe that was the case. And we haven't seen him since and we haven't heard Brendan speak about him. So maybe they fell out. And then when that didn't work out to replace him, Brian, he then did the Z thing where he tried to have like a crew of people. So that's when he had um, Malik and Chappelle 
But obviously, you know, two black guys in a room with a white dude, you know what they're going to do. And we're going to overpower you with our personality and our, and our charm and our charisma. So he didn't like the fact that he was being like, you know, he wasn't the, the, the A Mike, you would say. You know, Malik and Chappelle were adding to it. And I remember if you, if you check those early shows of Malik and Chappelle, read the comments. The comments are super positive about Malik. Oh my God, he goes amazing, amazing. And then like, they were the stars. And I think he didn't really like that. And of course, fundamentally, he never liked Malik anyway. Uh, Malik was always Brian's friend. And when Brian first brought him up, Brendan was hating straight away. Kind of maybe because it's a good looking ex-athlete type of thing. I don't know. But he didn't really like Malik from the first place. So that kind of ended. So it's funny that he's saying the Z's thing because that was a very long time ago, that thing. We're the space. We're the space. Look at somebody's old school phone ring. We're the space though. I got a lot of work to do. But we're getting it done. <laughs> I love how he keeps saying I got a lot of work to do, but he's not actually doing any of the work. I saw like tons of like Mexican dudes like actually working, laying the actual literal planks on the floor. You know what I mean? Steaming the whole thing, painting the walls black, and he's saying loads of work. And all he's doing is getting his camera guy to shoot him from the back as he's walking in, the superhero angle. As got as as Miss uh, Mr. Singh said. I got a lot of work. <laughs> You're just signing papers and pointing where you want stuff. <laughs> We're getting it done. We hear you guys. We get the concern with the 100,000 subscriber giveaway. We're going to fly you and a friend out to work out with me. Mark the body Harley. Backflip Lacey. Oh, do you, and the guy that they got. Yeah, do you remember this? So this was a big deal, right? Because I guess at the time when BGL got involved, obviously with him looking the way he does and being into weightlifting and whatnot, uh, bodybuilding, sorry, and all that malarkey, they were trying to push that whole like working out thing. And Brendan was going to the gym all the time in the morning with him. And they'd be doing these videos where they'd be like showing them doing deadlifts and stuff, you know, whatnot. And then as part of the promo to launch the channel, they're like, oh, we're going to fly you and a friend out and stuff, right? For, doesn't matter where you are. No, just fly you out to come work out with us. Sorry, doesn't matter where you are. And I think the Fire and the Kids subreddit figured out that they even, like, in, you know, the lying and the fucking finagling. He should have just been honest and said, hey, you have to be in the LA area. He didn't say that. He said anywhere in the world or something. And then by coincidence, the guy that ended up winning was some guy that was like a, you know, um, up and coming actor or some sort of social media guy himself who happened to live in LA. Like, what's, what's the coincidence that the one guy they pick was actually from where they're from already? Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, why lie then in the beginning? I don't understand this one. 100K is a long ways away. And for those of you that have been riding with us from the start, it's not fair. So we switch it up. We're going to do, we're going to pick a winner at 25K subscribers, which we're at 20 now, so that should be any week now. So every 25, we're going to pick one fan, fly out to LA, work out with me and the boys at Zoo Culture, and sit in on a podcast. Whether it's Find the Kid, Keenan Sting, Below the Belt. <laughs> Below the Belt. King of the Sting. Chuck, Calabasas Fight Companion, you pick. It's your choice. So every 25, some, someone's going to get flown out here. So every 25K, we'll pick 50, 75, Hundo, 125, 150, so on. Every 25K. That, they haven't done that since, have they? Subscribers to the Thick Boy YouTube. We're flying you out. So let's get it. We're almost at 20 now. We're at 20. Soon we get 25. Yup. Well, that was one year ago, you know, and like I said before, the optimism and the hope or the optimism and the hope and the just positive energy he was radiating then has completely, completely dwindled. It's pretty crazy to see, really, really crazy to see um, how quickly things can change within a year. And the sad thing with him, I'd reckon if he's really been honest with himself, it's all self-inflicted, really, for the most part. Most of it has been self-inflicted, the demise of certain things like just beggar's belief man guys get like an opportunity of a lifetime you get life presented you on the flipping silver platter goes up with a pretty successful dad who has a lot you know some pretty decent money where you can maybe try some things right risk some things when you're younger because i don't think growing up rich is a bad thing you know it gives you opportunity to try things and to take chances cool you do that you squander that then you get the opportunity of a lifetime. You get the opportunity of a lifetime where you become friends. You befriend the male Oprah and Joe Rogan. You get, you know, a, a, a comedic mentor in Brian Callen kind of guiding you through the whole process. You get a special before you should even get one. You get all these deals, showtime, all this good stuff. You get amazing things, just win after win after win, layup after layup after layup, and you still fumble it. It's just insane to see in real time. Honestly, really, really insane. Um, 